Hello everyone, uh, today I will talk to you uh, again about the RTX 3080 uh, which is right there from Nvidia, it's coming out the 17th of September and we are the 11th so that's gonna be in a few days. We have some leaked benchmarks from which we can extrapolate some useful information. Um, so what I want to talk about today is about not about money, not about uh, design or anything, I just want to talk about performance compared to other cards and TDP. So how much, how many watts it uses, how much power it uses, and how and this is proportional to obviously the heat it's going to dissipate, which uh, can be troublesome, especially for like small form factor builds. Uh, I have one and I see quite a few people as well um, wondering on Reddit and complaining about the efficiency of this new generation compared to the previous one. Uh, stating that uh, we have a 30% increase in performance, but a 30% increase in TDP as well, which uh, worries uh, a lot of people, including myself. So that's why I'm doing this video. I went through the numbers and I wanted to uh, crunch those numbers and see raw percentages and deduce things from that. So in this one, you can... Oh, okay, they don't even list the TDP. All right, anyway, just trust me, the TDP is... a. Uh, yeah, they don't list it. All right. Oh, it's here. Okay. Graphics card power. It's 320 watt, which is the highest uh, TDP we've seen so far. Uh, the highest so far was 280 watts with the Titan RTX uh, released one or two years ago. So let's see. So I have this spreadsheet. Uh, I listed a bunch of GPUs uh, from 2013 to now. Um, and only flagships uh, GPUs, so from the 780 to the RTX 3080, including Titan CADs as well, just to have a global view of how we improved uh, efficiency, per performance, efficiency, and TDP over time. Uh, it's not just about price, so it would be about price, I wouldn't compare with, with Titan CADs because they're ridiculously priced, right? Anyway, so I got these performance scores, uh, which comes from uh, user benchmarks. For example, the GTX 780 has a 51.9% average bench. Uh, that gives an average idea of how the card is. So all these, I manually took them from user benchmarks. Uh, the only one which is uh, made up is this one, which is 1.3 times the RTX 2080 Ti. Uh, because from the leaked benchmarks we have, it seems that on average, the RTX 3080 is going to be 30% more powerful than an RTX 2080 Ti. So um, the next column is uh, getting interesting. It is the performance in percentages relative to the RTX 2080. So the RTX 2080 here is going to be 100%. Obviously, it's itself. Uh, you can see that, um, for example, the RTX 2080 Ti is 44% more powerful. The Titan 5 is 42.5% more powerful, and the RTX 3080 is the most powerful of all of them. It's 87% more powerful than the RTX 2080, which is a huge jump. It's almost twice as powerful, which is awesome. But now comes the second column, the well, the next column, sorry, um, where I list all the TDP in watts, and you can see that the RTX 3080 has 320 watts, which is a lot. Uh, you can see that the RTX 2080 only had 215 watts, and this one has 320 watts, uh, which is quite a big increase as well in in heat, in power consumption. And what we are wondering now is the performance per watt. Nvidia claimed a 1.9 times uh, increase, which is total garbage. It is, I think they, they were just talking about a specific calculation. Yeah, whatever, just don't take this into account. Um, now, me, I'm more focused into the gaming performance and also slightly on the compute part, but I'm more into the performance in all the aspects, not just one particular aspect. Um, so here, there's a simple calculation where I divide the performance score by the TDP and we get uh, a performance by what score. The next column is the same one as the performance one relative to the RTX 780, but it is in terms of performance by what. So let's uh, let's just go to the let's go through this column first. Uh, this column first is interesting because you can see that we started uh, seven eight years ago. We started with 200, uh, 200 ratio, let's say, which is really terrible, and we increased slowly, went back to three hundred three hundred eight with the TI, and we had a huge jump going from the GTX nine hundred series to the ten 
uh, to the Fazon series. That was amazing. That's why a lot of people uh, hold on to their GTX 1080. I have a GTX 1080 as well. And we that was awesome. So we all jumped on that ship. Uh, then we they released uh, the Titan 5, uh, which is, well, V or 5, whatever, uh, which is surprisingly more uh, per efficient. Um, and we went down the road with the RTX 2000 series and the Titan RTX, which are again more per efficient, uh, which is good, right? But there's no major jump. And you can see that the Titan RTX here uh, had a per efficiency of 693. And the RTX 3080 is almost the same, which it is an increase, so that's good, but it is a bit disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. Um, there's almost no jump, even from the 1080 to the 2080, we went from 5, sorry, 578 to... Oh, actually, no, never mind, that was even worse. Okay, that, that was a total disaster. Uh, we went down in performance by what, so forget it. But with the RTX 2080 uh, Ti and Super, we went quite up. But that that is a small jump in performance by what. Um, you can see here the performance by what relative to RTX 2080. So there's nothing revolutionary about this card. Uh, the RTX 2080 Ti already had this per efficiency. Um, so. What it feels like now is that Nvidia is just trying to stuff a lot of like hardware in this chip, and they're like, yeah, whatever, it will heat up. But the performance is here. Well, indeed, a lot of people don't care if it heats up and if it consumes a lot of, of electricity. But in the long run, that's not viable because this is going to be this beast is going to be hard to to cool down. Trust me, I will see benchmarks uh, in the coming days. Uh, the NDA is coming down on the 14th of September in three days, but they will have trouble cooling this card. We already seen like huge coolers of like more than one kilo. Uh, the 3090, I didn't like list it here because it's not gonna come out yet, uh, but it's gonna be 350 watts, which is even higher. It's ridiculous. And they have huge coolers. Like it, it is being ridiculous. And what are they gonna do for the next generation? I don't know. Are they gonna pump more watts in that? You cannot have a graphics card with 500 watts of TDP. It's impossible. Um, the solution here is I hope that NVIDIA is going to realize they need to invest in the software and the drivers and uh, bring up the NVLink technology, which is a replacement for SLI, uh, to games. And that is the only viable solution to scale up performance. Because building single CPU GPUs, it seems like we are, we are slowly increasing performance by what, but we are really like reaching a limit here. Uh, that may be uh, related to the size of transistors, which is already um, to the eight nanometers uh, size, which is already very tiny, and we don't see really an improvement in power uh, density anymore because of the denot scaling rule that is not valid since 2006 or something. So that's all I wanted to share with you. Well, what you can take from it is it's a minor improvement, but it is still an improvement. It is still the most powerful GPU. It is still more power efficient than the previous ones by the tiny bit, but still. So don't worry too much. It is a good card. That's my point. But should we expect more from Nvidia? I think so, especially considering the jump again from the GTX 980 to 1080. I hope they can do pull this off again. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day.